Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Extend Script Quick Tip Tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna show you how you can time your script so that you can then go in and improve things to make things run faster and more efficiently for your users. So essentially what the script is gonna do is create a new date from the start and end of when we run our code, compare them and calculate the difference between them. What this is gonna look like with our practical example is just going to run a for loop and writing a bunch of test lines of code to essentially wait until it's done. So what I'm doing is running a for loop 10,000 times. As you can see, it's flickering in and out here. Um, and that's just because it's going hard at processing. And after it, it's done all of the for loop iterations, it's going to tell me time elapsed, in this case, 0.398 seconds. If I was then to change it to say 10, I could run it extremely fast and see it only elapsed 0.005 seconds. And we can apply this to even more things like running other scripts. So let's just take a quick look at how this script works. Um, since it's very simple and you can write this on your own, essentially what we're doing is creating a new date. A date class inside of JavaScript is essentially just a date and time that contains a ton of information um, from the beginning of time. And this can include things from the date, the day, the hours, the milliseconds, the month, the time zone. There's a ton of different things that you can get from these objects. So essentially what we're doing when we're starting this script up is we're creating a random date. It's not random, it just in indicates the current time and we're basically punching it. We're stamping the current time into a variable. And then after we're done running our code, we're gonna create a finish time variable that creates another stamp that will tell us the exact time that we reach this bit of code. Then we're gonna tell using a right line, the time elapsed is our finish time minus our start time divided by a thousand. Because the format when we call get time is not gonna give us the seconds, we need to divide by a thousand. In fact, we can go into here and see the get time will return the number of milliseconds since midnight January 1st, 1970. So if we take the millisecond difference between when we started the script and when we ended it and divide it by a thousand, it's gonna give us the number of seconds. And then you can go down the rabbit hole and kind of do more math. If you wanted to get, say, hours, you could divide it by 60 again. And this should give us an extremely small number when we run it. You can see it doesn't even go that far, but previously we got 0.001 or 0.005 and now we're getting 0.0001. Um, and that's in hours, so we would need to change this. So essentially that's going to do it for this tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed. That is how to time your script using JavaScript extended. Use it to date objects and then you calculate the difference between them and calculate that difference to whatever time property you want. It can be seconds, milliseconds, hours, days. It really depends on what you're timing. If you're doing some really powerful math calculations that take hours or days, then you can use longer time properties. But if you're using just a normal script that's running through some layers and things, usually seconds or milliseconds is perfectly fine. And then you can take that data of how long it took to run your script, make changes, and see if you can improve the speed and thus make your product better. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments for future video ideas, leave them down below. And of course, hit subscribe to be notified of new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.